Hey guys, it's Jen from iCreate Crafts. In today's video, I will be showing you step by step how to create these customizable wood signs. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up below if you love this video. Now let's get started. <laughs> Right, guys I have to start out <laughs> this one is funny I'm sorry it's funny for me because this just sums up my whole house <laughs> so if you get offended by this I'm sorry but if you think it's hilarious thank you <laughs> um I was gonna make some of these but I found these actually on Etsy uh, I think it was 350 and I believe you got maybe six different um, designs so really not that bad so I just purchased these on Etsy I'll leave the link below in case you're interested I think the designer did an amazing job with these um, but these are just two of them that I'm going to be using like I said I think there's maybe five or six different um, designs there but I like these ones the best so this one's going to be a really quick tutorial uh, I, I love these wooden signs that I bought from Amazon they are amazing they're nice and thin you can do whatever you want with them and I know this will be perfect for my wood signs so the only thing you really have to do on this is change the size and if you guys know my channel you know I like visualizing things so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna start on the side here on the shapes and I'm gonna click circle and I know my circle is a 12 by 12 so I'm not gonna unlock this but I'm gonna go up here to the size and I'm just gonna change it to be a 12 and then it automatically changes it to be a 12. So I'm not changing it. Sorry guys, I just shrunk my screen right here really quick just so we could see it. And I'm just going to start with one of them. I think I'm going to start with this one. I just like it a little bit better. Actually, I think I'm going to start with this one. I like it a little bit better than the arrows, but I think I'm going to be using both of them. So if I put this on top of here, you can see that it went behind it. So don't get scared. It is still there with your uh, design selected you're going to want to go to the arrange button up here and then send to front and then here it is so now I'm going to make my screen a little bit larger so we can see it a little bit better and so a couple of things you need to think about here are you do you want to put something up at the here at the top or do you want to put something down at the bottom or you know you got to think about all that before you're going to go ahead and measure this so I'm not putting anything at the top. I'm going to make this as large as I possibly can. So I'm going to stretch it out right now and see how large I can get it without unlocking it and opening it. I want it to be pretty much as far as I can stretch it on all sides without going off. So like I said, this is going to be a very, very easy sign for anybody to create. And I love the way that this is already cut out for you. Um, all the words, everything is all one whole piece, as you can see it on the side here. So you don't have to attach or weld anything. They did a really awesome job with this. So I actually think it looks good the way it is. I'm trying just to look here. I don't want any pieces off on the side. And it's going to be a little bit of measuring and eyeballing it when I put it onto the sign because I'm just going to cut this out and I'm going to just weed it where I keep all of this. Normally, I would reverse weed it and take off everything. Uh, just the words on here and then paint it but I like doing the vinyl on it uh, if you watch one of my last videos with the Easter sign I actually used vinyl and I like it a little bit better than using paint so this one is actually going to be vinyl as well if you're interested in paint you could do it the same way just use paint and reverse weed so basically that's it that's all I had to do so this one is good to go and you know what because I'm going to be selling these I'm actually going to do the same thing with the next one and show you guys really quick just what it looks like when it's larger so again it went behind don't get scared go to a, a range and then move to front and I'm not unlocking it I'm just going and using the double arrows and making it as large as I can I don't want to unlock it because I don't want to screw up any of the measurements here so I just want it as big as I can possibly get it and I'm trying to see if there's enough room at the top. See, this is where we're going to have to eyeball it later on that we have the same amount on the top as the same amount on the bottom. So I love this one too. So I'm actually just going to leave it. I'm going to get rid of this because that was just to visualize it. And I'm going to cut both of these out. So uh, follow along. I'm just going to go to make it. 
and then I'm going to show you what it looks like really quick. So here's the first one. It, it just cuts out on one. You could, if you wanted to use, you know, 12 by 24 mat, you could most certainly do that. But I'm going to leave it as two separate ones. I'm just going to click continue. I didn't change the color or anything because since they're on two different mats, I'm just going to do it, I believe. I'll, I'll probably do one black and then one white. And then I'll paint one side in black and then one side white. So on here, this is my base materials that I always use. I just use this one right here, the stencil vinyl, and it cuts out perfectly for me. So I'm just going to click on this one. Make sure you have a fine point blade in, but make sure that it is very sharp. If you have to buy new ones, I'll leave a link below. I bought, I think, 36 new blades and I think it was about eight dollars for them so if you need new blades I would definitely recommend putting one in here before you cut this out so I'm going to cut these both out one on black one on white and then I will weed it out and I'll show you the next step but please make sure you if you're going to leave this on your wood make sure you use 651 the 651 is permanent you want a permanent vinyl but if you wanted to use this as a stencil you want to use 631 which is not permanent if that doesn't make sense please come to me I'll tell you more about it but as for now I'm just going to continue with this I'll cut it out I'll weed it out and then I'll show you the next step because there is a little bit of a process of getting your board ready all right so I have all my files cut and weeded you probably can't see this too well it's on white so I'll show you this one um, I did a few of them because I'm going to be doing a few different signs, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. So I have this one here. I'll show you my other black one I was working on. It looks the same, but this one has the arrow on it, and I thought it was kind of cool. So, and these are going to be the wood signs that I use it for. These are thinner, um, but I really like these. They, they work really well for my signs that I use. I'll leave the link below in case you're interested. I think they're $17 and you get 12 round pieces. And these come pre-sanded. I really like these. They turn out really well. Um, there is one side that's really nicely sanded and then the other side's a little bit rougher. So I always like to do a little bit of prep work with any kind of sign that I use when I'm painting or using vinyl. So just go over it really lightly with the like 320. And this is the only sandpaper that I have. I use a hand sander and this is what I have left over. So it works for me. I bought a whole box of this. I think it was like under $20. So it was a huge box of so many of these different grits on it. So I'll leave the link just in case you're interested in that below. I will be doing a lot more signs um, that I'm going to be making myself. I'm going to be cutting, routering and doing all that with the signs myself, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, this is really good. I really love this. I've made a few signs. I just made a welcome, or a every bunny welcome Easter sign that turned out really awesome. So if you didn't see that, go back and check that one out. Um, but again, you just wanna do really light sanding, not hard. And you always wanna go with the grain. You don't wanna go against the grain, so you wanna see where your grain is going. So mine's just going this way. I already sanded these pretty well, but I just wanted to show you just go with the grain back and forth with a higher number grit paper, because you don't wanna put a whole bunch of holes or nicks in this. And then once you're finished with it, just rub it off really well and kind of feel it. Does it feel smooth? Does it feel like it has like um, parts up on it? Does it have burrs on it? You want to make sure it's nice and smooth for your vinyl to stick onto. So the next part I'm going to do is actually spray paint this. I'm going to go outside and spray paint it. I just want to show you, I always use this Rust-Oleum paint. I love this. It's a paint and primer. And I also have this stuff that I bought from Walmart or um, even... Menards. It works, but it's not as thick. I don't really like this. It takes several coats of this one rather than just one coat for this one. So definitely look out for the paint and primer. I have a black one. I also have a white one. So I'm going to be doing a few black signs with the white vinyl on the top and then making a few white ones with the black vinyl. So stay tuned to see what this looks like, but I'm going to go outside and paint this really quick. I don't think you guys need to see me doing that. So I'm going to go out Paint this, I'll let it dry, and then I'll show you the next step of putting your vinyl on. Okay. All right, guys, so I finished uh, prepping and painting my signs. As I said, it's very important to put your prep time into this. I sanded this quickly. I painted it with spray paint on both sides, and I did the sides. And then after it was dry, I sprayed polyurethane on it, which will ensure that the paint is going to stay forever. It's not going to leak off. It's not going to run off or anything. It's very important that you put your poly on before you put your stencil on or your vinyl on. So here is one. I chose to do a gray one, and then I did a black one, and then I did two white ones. And I did so many because 
I'm going to be selling at a flea market in a couple of months and instead of me just doing one and showing you guys how to do it, I figure I would do a whole bunch of them. So I'm actually with this black one so we can see it a little bit better. Um, but again, you just want to make sure that your surface is nice and soft to the touch, no little burrs or anything up on it, or your vinyl is not going to adhere to it. So you want to choose which side is better for you. Um, I think this side's going to work a little bit better. It's a little softer on this side. so. I have some transfer tape already cut out the size that I need, and I think and you have to use one of these white ones, so I have these two white ones to choose from. I have this bigger one and then the half a one here. I think I'm going to start with this big one here first to show you what it looks like. So again, if you remember, I did the, the black circle or the white circle behind so you guys could see, you know, we could visualize what it looks like, so now I can kind of visualize it with it being cut out how it looks. So I'm just gonna take my transfer tape, peel it back on one end, and it's harder to do when you got a bigger piece of transfer tape. So what I like to do is just peel the top part off and then work my way down once I stick it on. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just using transfer tape from Amazon. I like buying the big um, bundle of transfer tape. So I'll show you this really huge thing. I've been using it so much. Normally I would pick it up from the dollar store, but this is so much more and it comes out to be cheaper than buying it at the dollar store. Plus I think this quality is just a little bit better. So in case you're interested, I'll leave the link below. So what I like to do is just take just the top part off. So I have the, the paper behind it. So I'm pulling that behind and then lay your, you know, your vinyl out and then start at the top. So kind of like make sure it's even at the top here. And then instead of just pulling the transfer tape, I pull the back part. So I'm just pulling the tape off, or the back of the transfer tape, as I'm going. Oops, I got it stuck here. So as I'm going along, as you can see, I'm just pulling the transfer tape and making sure it's nice and tight to the vinyl itself. And this transfer tape is a little bit larger than the piece itself because I'm going to be using this for the rest of them. So I cut it out to be the size of the largest one. So now with that on, I'm going to use my scraper and just scrape one way really well, making sure I don't have any bubbles and helping my vinyl adhere to the transfer tape. So you want to take your time with this and make sure you get enough pressure on everywhere so that it will come up as one piece. So I like to flip mine upside down and make sure that I, when I'm pulling it off that I'm getting everything off and not leaving anything behind. So it looks pretty good right now. Perfect. So I didn't lose anything behind them there. So I'm gonna flip it back over again. And I like to look which way my lines are going. I'm sorry, kind of black on black here, but I'm looking which way the grains on this is going because I like to have it going left and right. So I'm not gonna put this down yet, but I'm just gonna lightly put it here and just let it sit here for a second. I'm sorry, I should have worked with the white one first for you guys, just so you could see what it looks like. Um, so I'm just lightly putting it on here and I'm just looking at the bottom half here and seeing if it's center. I'm looking at the top to make sure the curve is nice and neat. And I'm also looking on the side here to make sure there's enough. Um, it's even on all sides. So it actually looks really good to me where it is, but you want to just take your time and look where it's at. Like you don't want to have it too high or too, too far on the sides, but I actually like where it looks, where it is right now. I think it's perfect. So uh, the next step you want to do is just put it on. So you want to take your squeegee again and do the same thing. But this time we're working it onto the wood instead of the transfer tape. So you want everything to come off of the transfer tape and stay on your wood. So once you think you got it on, you just want to slowly peel back your vinyl. And if anything tends to pop up, you can just hold it with your finger and then keep pulling. But the whole thing is, is you want the vinyl to stick on here really, really well. So I'm going to tell you a trick once I get all this down. All right, so this may sound funny, but it actually works. So I just have a regular hair dryer here. I'm not using a heat gun or anything. I don't want a lot of heat to go on here, but I use this all the time for when I'm trying to make sure that my, my vinyl sticks really well. Like if you have any bubbling in here or anything, this is gonna do the trick. A lot of people say, you know, 
poke a pin in it or something. I don't like doing that. I like to just use heat to it and then just use my fingers and glide it. I'm not, you know, wiping side to side. I'm just pushing down with my finger as I have it on. So I'm just going to put this on low heat and then just go over it. So there, so you're just gonna look at it, and I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but I can totally see that it's in the grooves of the wood grains. So I don't know if it really shows up on there, but I really love how this one turned out. I have three more to go, but it was just as easy as that. And then at the top, you can put something up here on the outside, but on the back, I'm just gonna turn it over and put a piece of ribbon on the side back here, or you could use like jute or something. I haven't really decided what I have yet. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'll just use some jute for this one, but I'll show you how I do it. You just take some hot glue and put it on the back. So I'm gonna finish this up. I'm just gonna think I'm gonna go to maybe the gray one so you guys can see it a little bit better. But here's my gray one. Again, just spray painted it. You can paint it, but I don't like having the, the paintbrush lines on it. So I'm just looking, I can see which one's better. I don't know if this shows up, but there's like cracks and stuff in the back of this one. So I definitely do not want to use that side. And again, I'm looking for the way the wood grain is going. I like to have it side to side rather than up and down. So I'm just gonna take my next one with the same transfer tape that I just used. Let me grab my other ones. So I'm going to use this one. So this one's almost the same, but it has the little arrows on it. So I'm gonna use this one to so the full circle on here. So again, I'm doing the same thing as before. I'm not putting it on all the way. I'm just lightly putting it on so I can see what it looks like. All right, so here is where I wanted it to go. Took me a few tries, but I finally got it. So just take your scraper and go on here. And you guys can see this one a little bit easier than the black on the black, the black table and the black vinyl. So I'm just taking it and scraping it really well on here. And then I'm just gonna take my vinyl or my transfer tape and peel off. So just like that, here's this one. This one is finished as well. I think I like this one even better. I like the gray on here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I see a few bubbles in here already. So I'm just gonna take my hair dryer on low and make sure it sticks in there really well. So I'm gonna finish this up. I'm just gonna take some hot glue, put some on the back here with some jute or something and put it on the back. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. But I really like how this looks. I like this one the best, I think. And it's a little bit light, lighter weight. So you can put it in the house. You can put it right in your door if you want. Um, but I thought it was kind of funny. Thank you, Andrea, for the thought of doing it. Um, but I, like I said, I did buy all these. I think it was on Design Space. So. I'll leave the link below, but I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. So here are the finished signs. I used some thick rope and attached it to the back with some hot glue. And one of them I added a bit of greenery and a bow. I'm really bad at making bows, I will admit it, but I'm working on it. These were really easy and fun to create. I'm excited to sell these at my upcoming craft show that Emma and I are going to be in and at the stores that I'm currently selling in. I hope this video tutorial helps you out and you get the chance to try it out yourself. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave me a thumbs up and a comment below. Happy crafting everyone!